Welcome to a brand new series. In this series, we will explore the finer detail of the structured atomic model and use it to explain why certain nuclear reactions may occur and others may not, why certain elements are more stable than others. We will start by examining some of the basic rules regarding this model. If you have not seen the first three episodes of the Atom series, then it is important that you start there, as this sets the groundwork for what will be explained in this series. In the first episode, we will explore the concept of spherical densest packing and use it to explain why certain structures are more stable and some are not, and how this concept matches what we see in nature. In the structured atomic model, the nucleus is constructed using protons which are bound together with inner electrons in a very specific geometric structure. We will cover the role of these inner electrons in a future video. For now, it is simply important to understand that the protons are attracted inwards towards the center because of this. In this video, I would like to outline how this idea of spheres being attracted inwards creates some geometric shapes that are stable and some that are not stable. These shapes will then determine which elements are stable and which are not, and the process by which large atoms can then be created. The growth of the nucleus then follows a very simple rule called the spherical densest packing rule. This can be thought of as an attractive force acting towards an imaginary centre of the structure. These structures seem to form platonic solids that have triangular faces, the tetrahedron, the octahedron and the icosahedron. The central structure of the octahedron is a square with spheres stacked on top of one another. At first it may appear that this structure is stable. But if we consider the distances from the center, it is obvious to see that the spheres that sit on the top and the bottom are the furthest away from this imaginary center. And this means that in order for all the spheres to move to the closest point, they have to move each other out of position. This means that this shape is not stable as the spheres can easily move. The icosahedron and the tetrahedron are the only two platonic solids that are stable and not easily broken. Let's take this one sphere at a time. A single sphere exists by itself, and it can be considered to have zero dimensions. Two spheres can be attached to each other in only one way. This gives direction and depicts one dimension. With three spheres, there are two possibilities. In a line, which represents one dimension, or in a triangular shape, which would then represent two dimensions. When we consider four spheres, there are three possibilities. All four in a line, in the shape of a square, and in the shape of a tetrahedron. The latter is the most stable structure and is the simplest of the platonic solids. If we now try and add an additional sphere, at first you might think that this could simply be added on the bottom. If we consider the spheres in the tetrahedron, it can be seen that each sphere ends up being attracted towards the center but this center is equidistant from each sphere. If we now add the additional sphere, the center point now becomes the center of the triangle. You can now see that the spheres on the top and the bottom are now located further from the center compared to those in the center triangle. Each sphere pushes the other one out of position, leading to an unstable structure with five spheres. Six spheres create an octahedron, which at first glance appear to be stable. As each sphere is being pulled towards a common center, the sphere will initially create a tetrahedron with two spheres attached on either side. Notice that this structure has a gap which, if filled, would create a ring. This structure is therefore not balanced, but is stable. Adding a seventh sphere now fills the missing gap and creates a pentagonal bipyramid consisting of a ring of five spheres and one sphere on the top and on the bottom. Eight spheres creates a similar condition found in the five sphere example. The inward pulling force causes the eighth sphere to penetrate the ring below it, breaking the underlying structure. It is therefore not possible to create a stable structure with eight spheres. If we go back to the seven sphere model and now add two spheres on top, we create a stable but unbalanced structure with nine spheres. Adding a tenth sphere on the opposite side creates an unbalanced but stable structure. By adding one additional sphere we end up with eleven spheres, 
and this balances both sides. The addition of one more sphere now creates an icosahedron shape. This is the largest platonic solid that can be densely packed. This structure has 20 sides, each made up of three spheres in an equilateral triangle. This structure is very stable, but it is important to realize that this is actually hollow in the center. Let's examine the structures and compare them to the first elements in the periodic table. Starting with hydrogen, which is essentially an isotope of deuterium, it has just one proton in the nucleus and one outer electron. After this we have deuterium, which represents our two-sphere model. Next up we have hydrogen-3 or tritium as the straight line and helium-3 as the triangular shape. Helium-4 consists of two deuterons aligned in a tetrahedron shape. According to our rules, there should not be any stable atom with five spheres. Both helium-5 and lithium-5 have half-lives of 10 to the minus 24 seconds, clearly showing that they are not stable and have only ever been created artificially for these very short durations. Lithium-6 is a stable configuration, as is lithium-7. We also said that eight spheres would not be stable and we find that lithium-8 decays firstly to beryllium-8 by beta decay, and then beryllium-8 decays through alpha decay into two helium-4 nuclei. Beyond this, we find lithium-9, which decays into beryllium-9, which has a stable structure comprised of tetrahedrons with shared protons. Although both of these structures are stable, beryllium has an additional inner electron, which makes this structure stronger and more stable. Adding an additional sphere now gets us to beryllium-10, which decays to boron-10 for the same reasons that we discussed with lithium-9. Moving along, we see that adding to boron-10, we arrive at boron-11, a stable configuration that is also more abundant than boron-10. Continuing this, we arrive at boron-12, which decays to carbon-12, again, like we discussed with lithium-9. These are the building blocks that are used in SAM to create atoms. Larger structures are created by using these blocks to build larger and larger structures. In future videos, we will explore how these simple rules can create large branching structures and what role the inner electron plays in this formation process. As always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.